What's going on? My name's Sha. I hope you're having a good day. I am having a fantastic day. Today we are doing a mod spotlight on environmental tech, a mod by Valkyrie of Night. Environmental tech adds three blocks to world generation, alabaster, hardened stone, and basalt. Machine bases can be made from any of the three blocks added, from the basalt, the alabaster, and the hardened stone. The three blocks can also be used to create structure blocks. Structure blocks come in four tiers, tier one, tier two, tier three, and tier four. And that's alabaster, hardened stone, and basalt structure blocks. Lonsdalite is another block added by environmental tech. Lonsdalite is a weatherproof block. However, it is not obtained through world gen such as the other three. Instead, you have to get Lonsdalite shards from the Void Ore Resource Miner. And it takes nine of these to create a single block. Mycia is another block added by environmental tech that is not obtainable through world gen. Instead, it is obtainable only through the use of the Void Resource Miner. Mycia is a required component for tier three and four machines in environmental tech. Enriched sand is used to create clear glass. Enriched sand is simply one nether quartz and one sand gives you one enriched sand. The first two blocks to craft when you're ready to get started in environmental tech is the digital guide and the assembler. The digital guide gives detailed information on each of the machines available in environmental tech. The assembler is used to assemble the machines in environmental tech by using them on the controller of each machine type. Environmental tech adds five different machines to the game. It adds solar panels, lightning rods, void ore miners, void resource miners, and nanobot beacons. Each of these machines come in four different tiers, tier one, two, three, and tier four. The first machine we're going to look at today is the solar panel controller. So let us look in the book at the solar arrays. We're going to go to the second page where it describes the solar array tier one. Here it gives us the specifications. The peak energy is 1,152 RF per tick. The modifier slots, there are four. And the space required to assemble it is five by two by five. It also tells us the blocks listed. It says we need 16 structure blocks tier one or above nine solar cells, and four modifier cores, or any upgraded version. So here we have 16 structure blocks tier one, we have four modifier cores, and we have nine solar cells. We also have the solar panel controller tier one. So let us go assemble the solar panel array. Now the solar panel actually forms above the controller. So we're gonna place the controller underneath where we want the solar panel. And for this, I'm going to go into survival, just so you can see how it works. You simply point at the controller when you have the items in your inventory and right click and hold down. And as you can see, the multi-block assembles and forms above us. To get the RF out of your solar panel and to transfer, you can simply attach whatever pipe or conduit you are using that transfers RF. And it has to be attached to the solar panel controller itself. All the tiers of the solar panel are assembled the exact same way. The difference being a tier two requires tier two structure blocks and it will require more solar cells. A tier three will require tier three structure blocks and more solar cells, but it will also require a few more modifier cores. A tier four will require tier four structure blocks and even more solar cells along with more modifier cores. All of this information can be found in the digital guide underneath solar arrays. Now we looked at the tier one and we saw that it produces 1,152 RF per tick and it has four modifier slots. A tier two produces 6,400 RF per tick and also has four modifier slots. A tier three produces 25,000 RF per tick but has eight modifier slots. A tier four produces a whopping 82,944 RF per tick and has eight modifier slots. 
So the next machine that we're going to look at is the lightning rods. Lightning rods are another form of RF production. And if we look inside of the handy digital guide here, we're going to build a tier four. So it says that we need 13 structure blocks tier four or above, eight lightning rods, and 29 insulated lightning rods. So I've got a stack of each, so that should be plenty. So we'll go out here, and just like the solar panel, the lightning rod actually assembles the machine above it. So we're going to go below it. You just take the assembler, right click and hold down, and it will assemble the lightning rod above you. And it might take just a second here, since I can't see where it's at. Okay. And there it is. It is assembled. The tier one produces 500,000 RF per lightning strike. A tier two produces 2 million RF per lightning strike. A tier three produces 8 million RF per lightning strike. And a tier four produces an absolute amazing amount of 32 million RF per lightning strike. The next machine we're going to cover is the Void Resource Miner. The void resource miner is used to collect basic resources such as dirt, stone, gravel, clay, and other things in world gen that are not ores. Both the void ore resource miner and the void resource miner require direct lines of sight to bedrock. So let us get that ready. So there's a line of sight to bedrock. Now, unlike the lightning rod and the solar panel, the void ore resource and or miner build downwards instead of upwards. So if we place the controller on top and stand on top of it, the multi-block is actually going to form underneath. Now, one thing you want to watch out for is to make sure that you don't have any blocks that are going to interfere when you're assembling your multi-block. So let us stand on top of it, and we'll go into to survival here. And we're just going to hold shift and right click after we make sure that we have all of the resources that the guide tells us that we need. So for the Void Resource Miner Tier 2, we need 32 structure blocks of Tier 2 or above. We need 16 machine bases, 4 modifier cores or any upgraded version, 3 laser cores, and 1 clear laser lens or any colored variant. And we'll get to the colored variants in a bit. So now we just take our assembler and we hold down right click and it assembles the multi-block underneath of us. And there we go. And as you can see, there's a laser beam shooting out of the bottom of it, going down into our hole to bedrock so we know that the machine is formed correctly. Now, both, actually not both, all three, the void ore resource miner, the ore miner, and the nanobot beacon, all require power. For this demonstration, we're simply going to use a creative capacitor bank from Ender IO. So now that we have power, and your power does have to touch the actual controller on one of the sides. Now we want to get our resources out of our machine, so for this we'll just use a diamond chest. And this needs to also touch the controller as well. So now it has power, and it has some place to put the resources when it collects it. And as you can see, we've already collected some instone and some sand, and there's some potsle. So let us look now at the void resource miner's difference between the tier 1 through 4. The tier one has a duration of 200 ticks. So every 200 ticks, you're going to get some type of resource. It has an energy buffer of 1 million RF and the energy cost of 10,000 per duration. So for every block, it's going to cost you 10,000 RF. It has zero modifier cores for the tier one. The tier two is duration went down to 150 ticks. It has a modifier slot of four, and it also costs 10,000 RF per duration. So you're still paying 10,000 RF per block. The tier three drops again to 100 ticks at the same RF buffer at the same energy cost per block. This one has eight modifier slots. It has a minimum of 10 ticks. A void resource miner tier four, its duration is 75 with a minimum of one or per tick an energy buffer of 1 million at the same cost of 10,000 RF per duration with a modifier slots of 12. 
Now, if we go back and we look at the very first page, it tells us the different modifiers that we can apply to the void resource miner. We can apply speed modifiers, which will decrease the duration. So the tier one could go from 200, well, there is no modifier, so you can't apply one. So let's look at the tier two. So there's four modifier slots and we could get it down to 20 ticks by applying four speed modifiers. You can also apply an accuracy modifier, which increases the lens targeting chance. We'll get more into the accuracy modifiers here in a bit. Next, we'll cover the void ore miner themselves. Let us make a tier three for this one. So as before, you wanna make sure that whatever that you have the parts for, so we'll go into the void ore miner in the digital guide here, and we're gonna to go to tier three, and it tells us we need 56 structure blocks tier three or above, 52 machine bases, eight modifier cores or any upgraded version, four laser cores, one clear laser lens, or any colored variant, which again, we'll get into shortly. So we'll go ahead and it builds down the same as the void resource miner. So let's build up. We'll place the block and we'll make sure we have a hole all the way down to bedrock. And now we simply right click on it with our assembler. I'm going to go ahead and do this one in creative because you, you basically understand now by seeing three other ones being built. So in creative, you get an instant one. So this is a tier three or void or minor. It also requires power. So again, we're going to use the creative capacitor bank from Ender IO. And it also needs some place to put the resources. So we will use this diamond, this diamond chest. Oh, that does say iron chest. Now the duration may take a little longer for it to power up. And there we go. We got diamond ore and cobalt ore. So this one is functioning and working properly. Now let us go ahead and quickly look in the book at the void ore miners in the different tiers. The tier one has, starts out at 400 ticks. It has no modifier, so we can't speed that up. The energy buffer is 1 million RF. The energy cost is 6 million RF per duration. The tier two is again, starts at 400 ticks, but can be decreased down to 60 ticks with speed upgrades or modifiers. The energy buffer is 2 million RF per tick. The energy cost is still 6 million RF per duration with four modifier slots available. A tier three's duration drops to 320 ticks with a minimum of 40 ticks. The energy buffer for this is 3 million RF. The energy cost is 4 million RF per duration. And this has eight modifier slots. A tier four further drops 240 ticks with a minimum of 10 ticks per duration. It has an energy buffer of 4 million RF and an energy cost of 3.5 million RF per duration. It has 12 modifier slots. Next, let's have a look at the nanobot beacons. And these are again, tier one through four. Since we've already seen how they're, all the machines are formed using the assembler, we're not gonna actually go ahead and, and make another one of these. They do just, form downwards. So, you know, stand on top when you're assembling these. And here are the, the four different versions, all the way up to the tier four here. They do require power and it does need to touch the actual controller. So there's power on this controller. Now the whole purpose for the nanobot beacons is to apply modifiers to your character. And this is exclusive to your character. I've got all the modifiers here. So we'll go down the list. We have saturation modifier, strength, flight, resistance, night vision, haste, jump boost, water breathing, and regen. So as you can see right here, we have a flight modifier. If we go to the ground, oh, we were already in survival. So we're in survival and it might take a second here for it to update since I just whipped through, there we go. So we're in survival and we're getting our flight from this block right here. And we're also getting all of these other bonuses, night vision, strength, resistance, and haste, the ones that are installed on this nanobot beacon. If this is chunk loaded, you can go anywhere in any dimension and all of these effects will be applied to you, but only you. It is an amazing, amazing little block. I would say, let's look at it in the digital guide, but currently that is not an option, 
but it will be added in the next version. Um, so says Valkyrie of Night. So yay, thank you Valkyrie. Next, we're going to move on to the launcher. I, I like this little block right here. This is not a multi-block, it's just a single block. And it's a launcher that you can have turn on and off with redstone or just have it always on. So we're going to have it on true. We can have velocity of set the velocity as a constant, or we can add velocity. So let's add a force and a velocity of four to the x of four to the z and a four to the y. And it should be on. So now if any entity walks up to this block, it gets those modifiers applied to them. So as you can see, it just launched me. I can think of a lot of fun things to do in my Let's Play world with this simple little block. Creepers? Yep, I'm going to be throwing them around for sure. So next, let's cover the modifiers. So we've been using the, the basic modifier core for each one of the machines we've been creating. But there are a few other types. There is the accuracy modifier, the piezo modifier, and the speed modifier. And we saw that the speed modifier could be used on the void ore miner and the void resource miner to decrease the duration of mine. The piezo modifier, if we look in the digital guide underneath solar arrays, it says the piezo modifier allows solar panels to generate energy from vibrations caused by rain. So if you use this on your solar panels when it's raining, it'll still generate power. Last but not least for the modifiers is the accuracy modifier. Now the accuracy modifier, if we look in the book underneath one of the void ore miners. This says accuracy modifier increases lens targeting chance. So these along with the lenses, and let's look at the lenses now. So we have yellow lenses in, in, in our inventory right now. So if we use a yellow lens instead of the clear lens that we use for the ore miner, and we can look at it in, where's it at? There we go. You. So for the void ore miner, with a gold lens installed instead of a, a clear lens, you can see that our chances of getting gold ore goes up 2.87 with just a clear lens to 6.79% with a yellow lens. Now, if you use a yellow lens in combination with the accuracy modifier, it'll go up even higher to get gold. So it basically kind of fine tunes whatever colored lens we're using for the accuracy modifier. Now, if we look at the different lenses, there's a lens for each individual color. And if I can not do that and just hit U, it can show us the different colors. So like green lens would be for uranium, yellowite, peridot. You can look at like say red, probably I'm going to guess redstone uses. Oh, yep, redstone. So clear for redstone is 4.1. With a red lens, it goes up to 8.21. And if you add in, again, the accuracy modifier, that'll go up even higher. So that's it for the lenses and the modifiers. So before we wrap up the spotlight, let's go ahead and look at the void ore miner and the resource miner and what kind of items and blocks that they have been collecting while we've been working on the spotlight. So this is the void ore miner. And as you can see, it's collected um, a slew of different types of ores. And they are from biomes of plenty all the way through to immersive engineering, subterranean, Minecraft, just vanilla, you know, vanilla ores. So it does get modded ores along with vanilla ores, not just the tech, you know, not just the environmental tech. And there's some draconic evolution. You know, I've seen some forestry in here, abyssal craft. So it's pulling from the ore dictionary and getting all the different blocks. So very, very cool. Now let's look at the resource miner and see what kind of resources it has been gathering. So, hey, look, a sponge. Oh, how nice is that? Um, in stone, clays, podzol or mycelium, another rack, mossy stone, grass, you know, just basic, basic resources. Hey, look, there's some obsidian. That's pretty cool. Basalt. So, yeah, it just gets your basic, you know, your basic resources that aren't ores. So that's going to do it for the spotlight on environmental tech. This was actually take number two. Um, I actually did a, a first take and uploaded it and everything, but there was a couple things missing and a couple things that were uh, slightly incorrect, and I just didn't want to have that. I wanted to make sure that I was providing you all with accurate, you know, information and making sure I was demonstrating all of the blocks 
and making sure that you understood how they work and got to see them function. So, yep, this is number two, but <laughs> I, I enjoyed making it a second time as much as I did the first time. If you did enjoy watching the video, please uh, don't forget to leave me a like. If you would like to see more content from myself and you haven't done so already, please don't forget to click the subscribe button. <laughs> Tongue twisters. <laughs> anyway, take care of yourself. Take care of those around you. And remember, be kind to the other humans. Bye-bye.